Hello science enthusiasts, you are watching a Captain Corrosion video about pulse laser deposition, where you will learn the basics of this technique, and how different deposition parameters affect the process. So let's start with the basics. Pulse laser deposition is a physical vapor deposition technique that allows synthesizing thin films of a variety of materials. In pulsed laser deposition, electromagnetic radiation from a high-intensity pulsed laser is used as an energy source to evaporate a solid or liquid starting material, which is called a target. This laser is aimed at the target material, where the beam interacts with the surface and creates a luminous plasma plume. The plume itself consists of atoms, molecules, ions and electrons. However, in some cases, larger particulates and molten globules of material can be ejected from the target during evaporation. Some of the extracted material is then deposited on the growth substrate, forming a uniform film that has the desired composition, structure, roughness and thickness. The deposition process is carried out either in a vacuum or at a low gas pressure environment which is achieved with the help of vacuum pumps and vacuum gorges that are connected to the deposition chamber. A gas environment of the desired pressure and composition can be created inside the chamber to tune the properties of the deposited films. Most importantly, however, the thickness, crystallinity, roughness, composition and other properties of the deposited film depend on the parameters used for carrying out the process. For instance, the amount of deposited material per surface area unit obviously depends on the distance between the target and the substrate. If the distance is greater, then less material is deposited. However, the film might also have a higher quality, as the energetic properties of evaporated material reaching the growth substrate often show optimum or sweet spot where the growth of high quality film is encouraged. The intensity, wavelength and length of the laser pulses also have a significant effect on the excitation mechanism that takes place on the target surface. For instance, using a laser with short pulses, shorter than 1 picosecond, electrostatic ablation occurs, in which case the electrons that hold the material together are excited so fast that they leave the material, resulting in an explosion of the small amount of target surface. When nanosecond or longer laser pulses are used, then the electronic excitations have time to relax, and the energy is transferred to lattice vibrations of the target. This is causing a fast heating of the surface and evaporation of the target material, which is called the thermal ablation mechanism. If longer pulses are used, then most of the impinging laser pulse is absorbed by the plasma plume which further energizes the freshly created plasma. In either case, the interaction of laser pulse and the target material results in highly energetic plasma plume, which is directed away from the target surface. It should also be noted that only a small amount of matter from the very top layer of the target is excited and extracted during each pulse. This means that the deposition process is rather slow, but on the other hand, it also allows obtaining films that have a very high quality. In addition, this enables fine control over the thickness of the growing film. The pulsed laser deposition process can be carried out in various gas environments at different pressures. This is important because the pressure of the gas has a significant effect on the film growth rate, crystallinity and stoichiometry. For instance, the deposition of metal oxides is normally carried out in the presence of oxygen, to ensure that enough oxygen is bound to the metal. The deposition of nitrites, on the other hand, should be carried out in the presence of nitrogen. It should also be noted that the kinetic energy of the particles arriving on the growth substrate depends on the pressure of the gas in the chamber. Using background gas reduces the kinetic energy of the particles and allows obtaining films with high crystallinity. At lower pressures, the extracted particles are not slowed down, and they hit the substrate with a higher energy. This may cause localized damage and sputtering of the previously deposited film. However, 
when the gas pressure is too high, then the energy of the atoms arriving on the growth substrate is not high enough to allow the formation of an ordered crystal structure. The resulting film may be with low density and amorphous, which in some cases may be the actual goal. Anyhow, the crystallinity of the grown films also depends strongly on the temperature of the substrate. Films deposited at higher temperatures are normally crystalline, while films made at lower temperatures rather amorphous. Thank you for watching our video about false laser deposition. Students and educators can find more information in the video's description. And if you want to see more similar content in the future, then like this video and subscribe to the Captain Corrosion YouTube channel.